Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Down Under Mastermind call for the 14th of January. And tonight we have on our call Ben and Blanche Morris from Perth. And they're going to be telling us a bit about what they're up to. Hey, Terry. Cheers, Robbie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'll just ask everyone else to mute yourselves out until we have come to questions and um, let um, Ben and Blanche do their stuff. Now, how do you do that, Robbie? Oh, there. Okay. Can everybody hear us okay? Thumbs up. Yeah. Good, good. Beautiful. Yay. Well, first of all, thanks, Robbie, for getting us on to have a chat. Um, Very pleased to be here. Absolutely. Right. Good to have you. Um, our sort of focus of today's chat is going to be getting to talking about the main crux of our business at the moment, which is um, consulting with other businesses and helping them to grow their businesses using digital marketing and social marketing and um, all the things that we've learned from SFM. But we thought we'd just give you a quick sort of 10-minute um, timeline from where we were in a traditional business to where we are now and maybe put some perspective on that. Yeah. So I don't know yeah. if you want to Yeah, okay, start I'll off. kick off. Um, so we, I mean, we could go back a massive way because um, <laughs> we've got two kids and we, in amongst there, after our first was born, we moved to Melbourne just for something different to try something new. Um, ended up coming back to Perth um, when... We'd had our second child over there, moved back home, and we thought, you know, we're not going to do it the conventional way. We're not going to um, go back to the normal jobs. You know, we had this idea that it was all going to be different. So we um, brought ourselves a cafe, and that was possibly um, not the best decision we ever made because... We, what we thought we were buying was this way of life and, you know, it's something that we'd always wanted to do. We'd lived in Melbourne. We loved the coffee. We loved that whole, you know, environment. And we thought, yeah, we, we can do this. We'd had um, little businesses at different times, you know, as well before that. But um, we were like, yep, this is going to be it. Bring a bit of Melbourne back with us. Um, in reality, what we brought ourselves was probably the hardest job we had ever had. Mm -hmm. And we ever have in our life. It was it was insane. It was it was open seven days a week. It was in a pretty um, good location, quite close to the city, about ten k's from the CBD. Was it? No, 10Ks? it was two k's. k's. Oh, two k's. Two k's. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Even closer. Yeah. So anyway, it was really close to the city, quite a busy um, area. So you know, we had about ten between ten and twelve staff members um, at any one time. We did catering. We yeah, it was insane. And I did all the accounts and book work, which was just also crazy. Um, so if Ben wasn't there, um, say he had to have a day off because he was like, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> um, I had to go to work because we just couldn't, you know, we were dealing with young staff members, you know, between 18 and 24, say 23. Yeah. And um, you just couldn't. You couldn't leave it up to them. It was too, there was too much at stake. Well, in the beginning as well, it wasn't as profitable as no. we were led to believe. We we kind of bought the business maybe more emotionally than with our minds. We really wanted mm. a cafe, and we kind of were going to do anything to get the one that we wanted. And what what mm. actually ended up happening was profitability wasn't where it needed to be. So when we did want to take yeah exactly what Blanche is saying, when I wanted to take time off, we couldn't mm. afford to pay a full time staff member to do my eight or nine hour shift. Hmm. we had to have one of us do it so that we could save that few hundred dollars yeah. um, in the first 12, 15 months. It was oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, so it was all, it was a, it was a massive learning curve for us as well. Because, you know, we had two kids, we're juggling all of that, picking up stock, the, work, the works basically. Mm -hmm. um, but we did go into that with a plan and our plan was to turn it around, make it a really profitable business, be able to sell it. And we thought, worst case scenario, if in two years we sell this and at least get our money back, then we got to take that as a win because at least we will have learned some things, we will have done what we wanted to do and that's better than doing nothing or going back to the same old job that we've always had. Yeah. So that's what we did. It actually ended up being a bit longer than the two years. It was closer to three um, in the end. We sold it you know, pretty quickly, fortunately, and we were thinking... That's great. We, you know, we've done that. We, we didn't make a massive amount out of it, but, you know, we did okay and we're like, right, okay, we're pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the next adventure. 
and it was it was about eight weeks before we actually ended up settling on the business that I came across an advert from Stuart. So SFM entered our world in January, 2014. We'd just read the four hour. So at, when we put the business on the market, we, we, were all, we were thinking about the next thing. I'd seen the four hour work week at the airport a few times and picked it up. We'd both read that. A lot of it made sense. Some of it wasn't what we wanted, but a lot of it did make sense. And then I responded to an advert uh, on Facebook from Stuart, one of the lines in the advert, I'll never forget, it said, um, the uh, principles taught in the four-hour week, working week can absolutely work for you. Click here to find out more. And that led to that beautiful Lamborghini video that Stuart does and I was in. So before we had even sold the cafe, we were, well, I was Benz. flying solo on SFM at that stage. Yeah. yeah. So um, we were part elated and grateful and like relieved, counting our, relieved <laughs> counting our blessings that we actually managed to sell the cafe quickly because we were at the point where we were just like we were done we were done we yeah. we didn't know what to do anymore because the, the kids were missing out we were run into the ground and you know what cafes don't make a lot of money they don't make a massive amount the average industry um percentage is about five percent if you're taking home five percent profit you're doing pretty good um, we were really strict on everything, so we were able to make a little bit more than that, but not a lot more. So, you know, it just goes to show you why they charge extra on public holidays and oh, don't pay, you know, don't pay their staff. Pay as the high extra, as they. support the cafe. Because <laughs> it, it was all, oh, it was a shocker. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so from there we went on, you know, we thought, that's it, we're out. We hired a caravan and we just took off, and we actually went um, all the way up to Broome up the coast. So, because we were like, we're out of here and we need to work out who we are again and what the hell we're going to do with our life because that is finally over. Yeah. So we went, yeah, six weeks, six and a half weeks up the coast. Beautiful trip with the family. Um, took Ben about three weeks to settle down. From oh, yeah, it was wound up pretty <laughs> Craziness, tight. yep. Um, eventually got back to Perth and um, on the way back, actually as we were leaving Broome, Ben was driving at three in the morning and he said, he woke me up because I was half asleep and he kind of went, right, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a drone pilot. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And he'd always played with these things. So he was like, he's wearing his drone shirt. So he's got it on. He's an, he's a, <laughs> that's a coincidence, by the way. Yeah. Unmanned aircraft. Anyway, so that's what he did. He took like 10 grand. He went, the SFM still kind of dribbling in the background. He was doing a bit of that here and there. I hadn't even looked at it. Off he went, did his training over in Brisbane, came back, shit, better get a job. So we got a job as a drone pilot and then he started the job in the November and went. I started the, the job in October November. and October. then um, went to Momentum Day in Sydney la last year, 2014, yep, yep. year before, oh, yeah. and um, realised really quickly that I was doing it again. I was trading time for money. Yeah. Like, I was working 45, I wasn't working 70 hours a week, but I was working 40, 45 hours a week on an average wage. It wasn't anything average, special yeah. and realized really quickly that we've done it again. Yeah. We've just gone we and did. sell. We both just I've went, just, what? Yeah, I've just gone and invested $10,000 <laughs> so that I can trade my time for money. Yeah. Yeah. Ben came back from that momentum day so pumped and so excited and just going, oh my God, you need to be part of you this. need to be part of this. Yeah. And my background is marketing. So I think he had a chat with Jay over there and Jay was like, why is she not involved in this? Yeah. And so I just I took a look and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. What are we doing? Yeah. And so I just went through I you went did, through the started, modules yeah. in like I went through all the modules in about two weeks. Yeah. I was just like everything blueprints, bucket lists, the 90 works. day challenges, the whole lot. Yeah. So I just smashed through it and I was like, right, let's just do this, get you out of this job. Yeah. Yeah. So And we were and we were kicking some goals. Like we came, um, you know, we had um, some good chats with Christian Gerard. They were starting to kick some goals. Um, we'd stopped Facebook, jumped on YouTube as a lot of people did, started to see leads come through, started to see apps come through, started to see apps up and upgrading to members. So the system was starting to work for us. And then... Hmm. And then <laughs> it was about... Um, well, first thing March, that happened, it? well, April, yeah. um, we got a, a mark against us on YouTube. Someone had um, reported one of the Stuart videos, videos, Stuart videos we were using. So we got a six-month 
restriction on our account. So we couldn't advertise? Couldn't advertise. Um, and then we were hit with a financial disaster as a result of the cafe and some very poor advice from an accountant at the time of the sale. That cost us a lot of money and it took basically everything we had behind yeah. us. It took all of the um, backup we had for all the, all the advertising budget we had, which wasn't massive anyway, took all of that away. It took away all buffers, all buffers, you know, and we've got two kids. We were like, we are screwed. Like yeah. that. I didn't even know. It just took everything. So it, fortunately it didn't take us long to kind of go, you know what? Nah, we're not going to, we're not going to let this kind of destroy. But we did go into survival mode. We just, oh, we, did. we just went into complete survival mode. It was like counting back to counting the dollars survival yeah. can get through this. And, and I think because of the psychology that we got through the SFM, we were at the stage where we thought, you know what, this is just another test. And yep. this, you know, entrepreneurs fail a billion times before they succeed. So, you know, let's just do what we got to do. And we tighten the hatch again and we just got through the next few months. Yep. Um, I realized that um, the only way that we were ever going to get ourselves out of that hole, that, that tax um, financial um explosion hit us with was to start doing something else as well as working full time. So we started to um, cons uh, not consult online. We've started reaching out to people um, through Facebook, friends that we knew, family that we knew. I was private messaging people, letting them know of the digital services that I was um, competent at. And I'd been doing website design for 10 years or so. So my first thing was to start seeing if people needed websites uh, and then on top of that, I started talking about digital marketing and social marketing and those types of things. And at that point, I was still a little bit timid with giving advice because we'd only done it ourselves. We hadn't gone into other businesses at that mm. stage and said, hey, Facebook can do this and YouTube can yeah. do this and your email marketing can, can be this great. And I think as well, um, as I'm sure everybody finds, that it changes very quickly and, you know, it can be really hard to keep up with what, is going on and what the latest updates are and things. So, and even myself having been in marketing for such a long time, it's such a different way of doing things. It's, you know, it, it actually is very different to traditional marketing and there's a lot to learn and, you know, it can be quite overwhelming at times. So we were a bit reluctant to kind of start standing up and going, you know what, we can give you advice on this. Yeah. But what happened was I went through and private messaged um, a couple of hundred friends that I knew, you know, more intimate than the other six or 700 people on Facebook. And I, we got 10 or 11 people respond and we had a few meetings and we got a few websites. And then one of our friends introduced us to a, um, a couple of girls who were running businesses on the East Coast and thought we could help them. So they actually took my private message, which was we can help people with digital marketing and strategy and we were introduced to them. So we said yes straight away and we met with them and we spoke about the things that we were competent with and they said, right, let's go. And we, we basically got them on a, um, on a monthly consulting fee. Can I, can I just say at this point, yep. um, Ben had sent out saying in his message as well, which I think was really key, he'd actually said, this is what we're doing with the rest of our lives type of thing. This yep. is... Uh, business. I am working in that job still because some people he already had some association with the current job that he was working. But this is what we're doing. Yeah. And this is going to be our business. So we'd really appreciate your help type of thing. Yeah. So I think that made a big difference as well. Yeah. And when, then when we did get this first person interested in us consulting with them, I guess it was a bit of a like, oh shit, now we better. Well, it was the, the this is, we're going to better do this. Like, this is actually going to be real. It was a little bit of that FSO figure shit out mentality yeah. where we were. We thought we've got to say yes to this. They've agreed yeah. to a consulting fee. We were we basically had said we would meet with them for one hour a week uh, on Skype online, and um, we would talk about the business, talk about tasks to achieve for the week, and the following week we'd follow up on those tasks, see how they've gone, talk about any problems, and then you know go through a whole heap of we've tasks done. for the next week, and then. The extra hour every month we would use for training, whether that would be on power editor or copywriting or ad creation, whatever they wanted. And our mentality going into it was that we would always say to them, you know, we would much rather educate you how to do it than do it for you. Of course, we can do it for you. Um, you know, Ben can build your website or he can, you know, do your Facebook advertising and things for you. Um, you know, we can just work out a strategy and give it to you and you just do it or whatever. 
but we would much rather educate you on how to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and that was for a few reasons. Number one, because we were very conscious of not getting bogged down again, doing all the work. Yeah, we didn't want to be writing the posts, creating the ads, yeah. you know, doing all the sort of worker bee stuff. Creating our, our own jobs again. Yeah, we thought we would be able to add more value by empowering people to learn that themselves, just as I suppose SFM's done for us and DEA's yeah. done for us as well. Mm. Um, but that sort of, so that relationship started and we did, we did really well. We started quite small and started working on website stuff and how they can improve, you know, traffic to the website, et cetera, et cetera. And then another customer got referred to us and we started working with them and then another customer got referred yeah, to us. And, and all of a sudden going. we were doing sort of three or four consults a week uh, on a monthly retainer. And, and when you have three or four people like that, they there's other things that they need to have done as well. So they need help with either websites or building autoresponders or Strategies. just doing lots of things. So on top of the consulting fee, we were getting hourly rates for general design or digital or web work as well. So really quickly in the space of about six weeks, mm. what was almost a cry for help because we needed to earn some more money became... Um, lucrative enough for me to really consider quitting my full-time job because mm. it was at the stage where it was just about matching my full-time salary. Yeah. And that happened. It didn't, didn't happen too far after I quit, no, I quit so. working full-time in October yep. and um, reached out to a few more people. And now on a consulting basis, we've got seven businesses um, in terms of other digital work that we've done. We've probably worked with 12 businesses yep. since October uh, across all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, but what, what we've done is we've really focused on the SFM mentality of keeping it all new age um, communication. We don't do face-to-face -face meetings in the real person. Even we, if you're in Perth, and we've got a couple of clients in Perth, and we just, we don't meet with them. And that was a bit hard for them at first. They, you know, a couple of them were like, but should we get together for coffee? And we're like, no, no. we shouldn't. Why should <laughs> well, why we get together? And they're like, but that we need to meet. How is this going to happen? I don't know how to use Skype. That's the thing you know? is the fear of using. Once, That's but it. once they've done it once, it's, it's yeah. fantastic. And we were always very, um, I feel like we approached this business a bit differently in that we were very clear and upfront from the start. And even if we didn't, in our heads, we were going, oh, shit, we hope they don't freak out by this. We'd just kind of go, we, you know, our time is worth money and mm -hmm. so is yours. And, you know, if it takes me half an hour to drive to somewhere and then we sit down, we order coffee, we have a bit of a general chit chat about how your life's going, um, that's another 45 minutes gone. And mm. that's cost us, it's cost you. Then you've got to do the reverse, saying goodbye, da da. You know, otherwise, we just rock up to these meetings, we turn on Skype, and we get straight into it. There might be a few minutes of g'day, yeah, but minutes, that's you know, it. We're straight into it. Your family, but mm. you know, that's it. And then we move on. Everybody's time's worth money, mm -hmm. and that's been something that we really try and educate our clients about as well. Yeah. Um, we always, you know, kind of say to them, well, if you, if you're focusing on that particular activity and yet it's not going to contribute to your income, well, then why, why yeah. would you do it when you can pay someone else to do it? Type of thing. Yeah. And we do other things as well with our customers. We email them the morning of or the, you know, if they've got an eight o'clock consulting session in the evening, um, we might email them at lunchtime that day and say, guys, looking forward to catching up tonight. These are the things we're going to talk about tonight. If you've got anything else, let us know. So that when we get on the call with them, um, everybody knows what the agenda is. Everybody knows what they're supposed to talk about, what they were accountable for last week um, and what we want to try and learn tonight and um, plan for the next week or so. Yeah. And, and it's worked really well. We've, has, we've, yes. we've not only um, attracted really nice people and guys that we like really enjoy mm. spending time with, but they've stayed with us as well. We've, we've had most of them now for four months, moving into five months, mm. and none of them show any sign of wanting to disappear or to cut us off or, nice. or any of those types of things. And that comes down to a lot of things. The, the, the biggest thing is the results that they've been getting. Um, both in terms of their development, but also in sales and profit. We've got two customers in particular that have huge lists and email fan bases. Yep. Um, uh, one of our customers is about to crack 75,000 fans on Facebook. They've got a list of nearly 15,000 people. 
another customer's just cracked 25,000 fans on Facebook and we've, we've been able to help them drive a major part of that over the last four or five months. Mm-hmm. But the, the big key factor that has, they're very sceptical with a lot of the things that we've been suggesting because it's all brand new to everybody. Yeah. So we're not looking at ways of cutting corners but just looking at ways to do things more efficiently and more intelligently with the tools that we have in front of us. So a lot of people haven't been uh, not wanting to do it, just have questioned um, yeah. their investment if it's going to cost them a thousand dollars or five hundred bucks or in more in some mm. in some cases. And but we've been able to sorry we've been able to um, across two of those businesses the sales that we saw online between October one and uh, Christmas Day were over 200,000 Australian dollars in online sales between those two businesses. These two businesses before we came on board were averaging, one business was averaging five or $6,000 a month and the other business was averaging between eight and 10 grand a month. So one of them in actual fact saw $36,000 in December just by themselves in isolation. So, and this is literally just using there's no other things that we've done apart from teach them what we've been taught in terms of managing your list, building your list, um, monetizing, monetizing your blog, um, you know, having clear objectives with posts, having clear objectives with blogs, having clear objectives with email campaigns, like, and really, really um, strategically focused, uh, a really strategically focused campaign governing all of those things we do based on whatever the two or three week promotion is that we're working with. And one of our clients in particular has really learned everything. So we've got customers now that know all the things that we've spoken to them about. And we're actually about to sort of start jumping to the next level of um, digital marketing and strategy with them because we don't need to follow up or teach them anything else about the basics anymore. They get mm. it. They know it. You know, they're doing their own webinars now. Yep. They're writing their own Facebook ads. They're, they're just sending us through metrics and um, copy to check off just to make sure that they're hitting their objectives. So it's really, really, it's good fun. It's, um, it's rewarding. Um, and yeah, we love it. Mm, It's great. It's, it's really, it's really enjoyable. And the people we're working with are really lovely as well. And I think that makes a big difference. Um, I think one thing as well to, to point out is that, you know, you get a wide variety of different people. Um, but at the end of the day, when, and we know this ourselves, when you are working in a business, you can't see it from the outside. You can turn up to work every day, you know, and work your 75 hours a week and cry yourself to sleep at night, but you still don't know if there's something you're missing because you're so entrenched in what you're doing that you you just don't get that outside view. And I think that is one area that we have been able to really help people with because we are looking from the outside into their business. So we're not just teaching them how to run their Facebook campaigns and how to, um, you know, monetize their sites or, um, you know, how to build their subscriber list. We're also looking at their business from the outside and we're able to kind of go, you know what, hang on. If this was a real life shop and you hadn't made a sale today, no one had walked through your door, what would you be saying? Mm, You'd be panicking. Yeah. So you need to stop what you're doing because you haven't made a sale for the last however many days or you haven't made you haven't hit your targets for the last couple of days. What are you going to do about that? Mm. And they're like, "Oh my god. Yeah. Yes, I haven't what am I going to do about that?" And we're like, "Well, exactly. You need to do something about that. Just because you don't have the overheads doesn't mean that this isn't a real business that should be treated exactly the same as if you did have those overheads." Mm. Because if you had staff to pay, if you had rent to pay, um, you would be looking at your business from a different point of view and going, shit, I better get people through that door. Mm-hmm. So it does kind of give that bonus for them. And I think that's another area where if people are concerned that maybe they don't have, um, you know, that they're not qualified enough to give people assistance with their growing business, um, that's where you, you're possibly looking at it wrong because just having an outside point of view is worth something to that person Mm. you know you can also help them with all their digital marketing but having that um, viewpoint of being able to sit back and go you know what I think you need to maybe shift the way you're thinking about things or refocus on the money-making activities or 
um, you know what, you've got too many campaigns going on. You've got too many. We've got one client who does, oh, she <laughs> does everything. She's got so much going on, we can't even keep up with her. And the main thing we often do with her is pull her back in line and go, you know what, you can't launch that thing and run that campaign and be supporting that cause because your Facebook fans and your subscriber, um, people on your subscriber list are just going. They're going to freak out. What? What is going on here? What am I supposed to be buying? Yeah. Where, yeah. where am I meant to spend my money? Am I meant to spend my money? Yeah. You know, so. I've yeah. actually, I've actually turned off a customer's campaign twice. <laughs> I've seen it in Facebook and I've just gone straight in cause I'm an admin on their page and turned it off and SMS them straight away and said, I've turned it off and they, they barked at me. Yeah. <laughs> and then a week later when they see the sales from the one campaign that was running, they go, okay, yeah, they're cool. Yeah. No worries. And then we launch another campaign. So we're getting a little bit ballsy because we're trusting in the knowledge that we have, have been taught. Mm. Um, and I think the other thing that we have learned now, um, again, when we, when I was still working full time, we were sort of saying yes to anything we could get because our objective at that point in time was just to raise funds. And now that we're beyond that, um, our F, uh, our objective now is to work smarter, not harder. Yeah. So what we're actually doing now is still taking on those website jobs, um, but we're outsourcing them all now. So we've got a couple of people that we found on Fiverr um, that have taken me a few tries to find. I've tried uh, eight or nine people now on Fiverr, and I finally found a couple of people that understand my instructions and, and are quite well priced um, and do a good job. And now I can take on websites. I can choose a theme on, on WordPress, and I can basically send them everything and they put the whole thing together for me, which would usually take 20, 30, 40 hours for me to do. And we might charge, you know, who knows, anywhere between $1,500 and $3,000 to do a website, depending on its size. And on Fiverr now, you can get it done for three or $400 and the rest of the money is yours. So we're actually a little bit more efficient with that. And we, we still polish and tweak and do those types of things, but definitely focusing on just the consulting and, and sharing the knowledge that we've been taught to help other people grow their business and just keep empowering and keep um, pushing the customers as far as they can go um, until they don't need us. And we're very open with that as well. We, we turn around to customers and say it's X amount of dollars per month, depending on how often you want us until you don't need us anymore. If yeah. you turn around in a month's time and say, thanks, I've learned all I've needed to learn, then that's no worries at all. If you need us for six months, that's no worries. Um, we're, we're there when you need us at the point in time that we stop adding value to your world, stop paying for us. Yeah. You know, there's, it, it's not, doesn't make us feel good because we, we know it anyway. Um, and if you guys aren't getting anything for your, any return on your investment, even if it's just education, um, then, then we've both got to pull the pin and that kind of happens in the first conversation where yeah. we're very open with those types of things. Mm. But yeah, so now 2016's here. Um, we're looking at, as, uh, uh, along with writing, um, along with working smarter, not harder, and having some outsourced solutions so that we don't get bogged down on, on those types of activities. We're also building an online workshop that we're going to be targeting a specific industry with um, to help, help um, a specific audience um, learn more about Facebook. So we're kind of going the next step again um, to try and reach a local audience first and then a national audience um, and have people attend a workshop where we're like, it's not just a buy a course, do an online course and, and you're done. It's fully interactive, private Facebook groups, regular sort of um, bits and pieces, but we're trying to work out how we can generate more revenue with some clever tools like that. It seems mm. workshops. So yeah, we um, have we have one of our clients actually um, who wanted to build an online course, and we um, then built that for them, and we helped them set all of that up, and it launched on the fourth um, of January, and they sold uh, two hundred and fifty eight. Was it? It's over two sixty. Yeah. Oh, two sixty people into that course, so they made a very yeah. substantial amount of money very quickly. Was that a, was, that was one hundred ninety seven dollars a ticket? Yep. So um, having seen that and how it was able to come together and how successful it's been for them just on their first round, I think that also gave us that extra, mm -hmm. you know, we'd had this idea of doing an online course, but we'd, after seeing it happen for them and actually play out, it's always, it always gives you more confidence to see use someone else's 
yeah. um, business, you know, and, and make that successful for them. There's not as much, I guess, it doesn't feel as though there's much, as much risk involved as if you're doing it all for yourself. So yeah, um, that's well, been... I think we definitely have learnt more working with other businesses than we like in the last five months. I think we are definitely better entrepreneurs um, and certainly more efficient in our own SFM business because of the experiences we've had with other businesses. Because we've had to, you know, be sort of everything to everyone, and then we've had to trust in all the stuff that we've learnt and we've seen results, but we've also seen like no results as well. So we've been able to look at things that don't work and had the courage to go, right, cut it off. It doesn't work. Let's start something new. And then, you know, even having landing pages for certain campaigns where you think you've done everything right and then you launch it and it's not quite happening, not quite happening. So you're sort of tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and then boom, all of a sudden stuff starts to go on. I think Mm. we've become a lot um, more confident because of having had this experience in the last four or five months and now, SFM affiliate business will definitely be better off yep. because of it. But yeah, confidence is definitely. That's probably the big thing. We're happy to have a conversation with anybody now without like, without being a little bit coy as to what we say, we can sort of stand up in front of people now and say, this will work if you do it this way. Yep. Or the reason it's not working is because you're doing this and not that. And we're much more confident in that approach now because we've seen the results. Yeah, and I think yeah. people like that, just that honesty and that, you know, clarity as well. Um, I will as well probably learn a lot more to go through um, unless people have questions. But um, I do want to also say that one thing um, when we set out doing this, like we, we did kind of like the idea of doing consulting, but our main aim was obviously to generate some income because of the situation we were in. And it was also to, you know, get to a point where Ben could leave his job um, because we'd had that time of our life when Ben was not around for the kids and we didn't want to have that anymore. Um, And we also wanted advertising budget because we want the affiliate marketing side of our business to, to really take off and generate that, you know, real passive income. Um, So we had to really be focused on, what we were going to do each week to make sure that we, you know, were getting clients or that we were maximizing, you know, that income coming in. And I think I feel really proud that we did do that really quickly and we were able to kind of, you know, pull it all together quite quickly, just go with things on the fly. And, you know, even if we didn't feel as confident on the inside, show that confidence on the outside so that people did start to trust us. And now, you know, going into 2016, we've, we've got it to that position where we do have the advertising budget. So Ben, you know, did leave his job. I actually um, ended up, I had a small business as well with a friend and sold that as well. So this is it. You know, we're all in now yep. for 2016 on SFM and we're in, um, we're our in, consulting. and We're doing Satori Prime's 90-day Facebook Kickstarter program at the moment, which yeah. I encourage everybody to jump in sometime. Yeah. Um, we're only a few weeks into it and already we can see oh, so many just, things. Just pushing you to yeah. the next level as well. Yeah. Um, so there's always things I think people can be doing. It doesn't have to be, you know, taking a course, but if you are looking for ways to, you know, generate extra income. There's a lot of opportunities to to help other businesses. And as long as you're approaching that with that honesty and that clarity and that confidence, um, there will be benefits for other people because the average person doesn't know what, you know, we actually get taught through SFM. They don't understand, you know, most details of Facebook. We come across people all the time um, that kind of go, I'm trying to run an ad, help, you know, or my business isn't quite doing well. They don't even know the basics. So there's a lot of opportunities for people there to kind of, you know, get in and start doing it. And you don't have to, um, you don't have to have the time during the day. You know, you can do it around other jobs. We did start with, you know, we did all of our consults. Our, our consults are still at night. Yep. Um, it kind of works with us because we've got the two kids. So we've got we put a new them, one that starts on Wednesday next week. Yep. Yeah. So we put the kids to bed, then we do our Skype consults. So, mm. yeah. And it's good when you've got customers that are parents as well because they totally get mm. it. They're they like, oh, yeah, well, that's cool. No worries. So nothing between sort of five and seven, Yeah. Um, which works well. But it's yeah. been great for us, guys. And, again, the 
training at SFM and also the the continual development, the continual development of the training that's happening. Uh, I logged into the back office the other day and started having a look around and every time you go there, there's something new, something different, a new lesson to learn. And I find that every conversation I have with a customer, whether it's existing or potential, whatever I've recently read, I you know you regurgitate the information quite quickly. So um, we're always able to show something new to our customers or have a new conversation or give them a new perspective regardless of how long they've been with us, just because we read something new so regularly, which is which is cool as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, us. that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd well, be happy to answer any questions if anybody yeah. has any or have a general chit-chat. But, yeah, thanks again, Robbie, for inviting us. Yep, hopefully hope- that kind of gives people a bit of an insight. It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to hear um, people doing, taking what they're learning off ECFM and using it for not just promoting ECFM, using it to p- build their own offline business. And that's what Stuart always goes on about. He says, you know, it's a learning platform, but it's also, you know, you can, you can promote ECFM, but that's not the be all and end all. You need to be building other income streams and, you know, that's what you're doing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, that's it. And we do, in day to day, we come across people, you know, all the time who have got bricks and mortar businesses who are, you know, wondering what they need to do next. And they don't realise that you can target your suburb or your couple of surrounding suburbs, you know, and you only have to say a few things to them for them to go, wow, I need you to help me. Mm. <laughs> I didn't realise I've been just putting my son out on the footpath and hoping for the best. Yeah. So... Yeah, there's definitely opportunities all around to apply it. But we, we were also inspired. I mean, there's a few people in the SFM community that were um, starting their own consulting businesses and workshop businesses out there as well. And that kind Brett of... Megan, Brett and Megan, you're awesome. Megs, yay. <laughs> um, that, was, that kind of inspired us to, to also yeah. take a leap of faith and go, well, we can do this, you know. Yeah, we, we it gave have us the that training. confidence. Um, so, yeah, there's... Yeah, it's been good. But has anybody got any questions or feedback or party no invitations <laughs> <laughs> just unmute yourself and ask away hi ben and blanche this is chris um in new south wales how you going hi chris. Good, good thanks, thanks. <laughs> that's good look you, you guys that was fantastic i loved your story it was great um, I've just got a, a question about Facebook and Satori Primes. I'm thinking of doing Satori Primes 90-day Facebook thing, but mm-hmm. I don't know much about Facebook. Do, do you need to actually start working on Facebook before you do their 90-day? No? No. Not, no, a, not, no at not at all. Not at all. I think if anything, if you're not tarnished by anything, if, you, if you've not been in there before, it's probably good because they... Yeah. they even though they, I think you need an understanding of Facebook in general, yeah. um, and we're only three weeks into it, so we've yeah. got another nine weeks to go. Um, but the last few weeks, I think at any level, you would benefit mm-hmm. from there it. There are a couple of people in our group that haven't, they're very new to, um, there's a couple who aren't part of SFM, but then there's a couple that are part of SFM who are brand new. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, the way they structure it is really good that they, you know, walk you through it and they give you time to actually do a lot of um the tasks as tasks as well in between yeah. but i mean you know having said that and not not say don't do it because it's, it's an amazing course but you know i think it's always important for everybody to look at um making sure they've got advertising budget if that's what they're wanting to do like if you want to do the affiliate marketing you've got to kind of weigh out where you're going to put your money um and I always come back to one of those things that, you know, I think it was Stuart always said about getting stuck in education mode. I mean, I don't know exactly where you're at, Chris, or anything, but, um, you know, you've always got to consider how you can kind of spread that out to to maximise the opportunities that you're, you've got presenting to yourself, um, whether that's, you know, that you're kind of going, okay, well, I've got a limited budget. I need to spread it evenly. Well, then you've got to work out where to put that. So, Having said that as well, though, the reason that we decided to do mm-hmm. the course was because we have got ourselves in a position where we've got a marketing budget for SFM. But yep. ra- rather than going into advertising 
and just doing what we do, we yep. thought let's invest a month's advertising budget into learning from these guys. I mean, these guys are managing accounts where they're spending a million dollars a month on oh. Facebook. This is what Guy yeah. and Alain do. So, yeah. you know, who better to learn where we should spend our small budget from than the guys that are spending that amount of money? So that was mm. our determining factor was if we're going to spend money, let's spend it the best we can. Yeah, and, and also we wanted to um, experience another like a course in Facebook because we're looking at launching our own course to a particular um, industry. And we also, um, we just wanted to make sure that we had something extra to give back to our clients as well. Yep. So that was the other way that we kind of looked at it. We thought, well, this will take us to the next level and we can pass that on to our clients. And, you know, in that way you, you kind of can see that return on investment as well. So, yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm. No, no problem. Wow, you guys. That is Hello. so cool. Hey, mates. <laughs> hey. Happy um, New Year. Me too. I was just going to say, um, uh, how do you guys book them in? Do you have like a, a calendar or do you just discuss it with them? Yeah, Bye. pretty – well, now we – We just um, have set time. Yeah, now – I suppose starting from one, it was pick your time. And then two, it was like any time except for this time. Yeah. And now that it's sort of getting, <laughs> yeah. yeah, now that there's a few more, I mean, we're only still consulting with six businesses. So it's, and they're only one hour sessions every week. So it's quite easy to handle. But now that we've got a Monday night, a Tuesday night, a Thursday night, um, the nights we kind of keep the Wednesdays to ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we also keep the Wednesday as a backup. If somebody else isn't available, we can push them onto a Wednesday, even if that's us as well. Um, but we've just started picking up uh, one of our new clients is on a, a Tuesday morning. So mm. it's kind of been a little bit just, just standard diary stuff. Yeah. But I imagine if it got to, which it, it may do, I hope it does. If it gets to sort of 10 or 12, um, it's just going to have to be a firm calendar with reminders for everybody. Maybe yeah, a, maybe a shared calendar on Google or something. We are very conscious not to take on too many people. I think we, we're kind of at our limit. You know, we won't, because there's the extra flow on work as well from that, that I think if we, you know, we've, we're very conscious that we just, if we took on too many, we could start to drop the ball somewhere. And these people want that personal you know, touch. They they want they like it that you remember what you talked about last week, or that you know you remember something that maybe they've sent you an SMS. Um, Hi, um, which we do give. You know, we give them our mobile numbers, and we you know say you can call us anytime. It's digital business. You you know whenever. Mm -hmm. So you know, I mean, if they email us at eleven o'clock and we're still up, we reply. You know, so it's. But it does make it easy, Mix, because we once we lock in the time, it's the same time yeah, every week. Yeah, same time every week. That's yeah. it. Okay, that was my next question. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah so, no, we don't. We don't let them swap around, or you know. Well, we do. They, if they need. Well, if they de if they yeah, did need reason, to, yeah. you know, like daylight saving change. So the East Coast people had to move their time slot, otherwise they'd be up at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we do. We do allow them to kind of move if it was essential, but we yeah. try and keep it the same time. So we know that that time's locked out. And that, I think that's part important for the like work-life balance as well. You know, that you know where you're going to be at, especially when you've got kids, you know, and the, the Eastern States one's probably the most awkward in that it's um, at five o'clock on a Thursday normally. Ours one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for us, it's five o'clock, which is not great for kids, but we've had them on board long enough now that, you know, they know the kids because the kids often will get out of bed and come in. Yep. And I can kind of go, you know what, I've, I've got to go keep doing this and I'll come back. Yeah. Mm. I think the other thing that's happening as well is um, we're kind of, Stu and Jay have said this a few times, that they wanted to build a community where they could just be with people that they wanted to hang out with. Mm. And we've actually found that, that we've attracted people that are like that. So we've mm. had situations where the kid's been sick or something's happened and we can quickly jump on Skype and message them and say, or SMS them and say, guys, I'm going to have to cancel tonight. I'm really sorry. And they're like, no worries. Let's catch up over the weekend. And yeah. we've got that type of a relationship with them where it's not a problem um, to, to be able to do that. So we've kind of, in the back of our mind, we're trying to attract the, the same thing. Like we want to be able to have a beer with these guys at Christmas time and, and yeah. celebrate the year and things like that. So we're trying to sort of have that as part of our 
customer acquisition, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. I think that's been a big mentality thing for me, especially because um, I've always, you know, I'd go to work and I'd be like stressing out that maybe I hadn't done the right thing or if, you know, what someone else was thinking. Whereas with this, I kind of feel like we went into it with that mindset and we, we did kind of go, you know what, this is, this is us. These are our kids. You know, so when the kids come in, we weren't like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Like, Guys, you've got to go. We're like, bloody kids, they're coming in again. Yeah. Hang on, I've got to go because this one won't go to bed, you know, and they're like, hi, in the background. So it's like we, we made it as if that was totally acceptable. And I think they then, because a lot of them are parents or they've, you know, either they had kids at one stage or they've got them at home now, um, you know, they understand that. Mm. So. No, that's good. Cool. There's one thing, I mean, with us obviously doing the consulting as well, is um, trying to find a time in business hours to see businesses when they're oh, working, yeah. right? So um, we've been yeah. chatting um, just this week actually about maybe like do, doing like a call with them. Yes, like, yeah. Like that, like just like, a, like whether it's a webinar or something like that. But, um, but yeah, no, that's... Like starting that way. Is bad. Yeah, I think I think because we never gave them an option for. No, well, the we, first customer we got was on the east coast. Yeah, we never really gave so we didn't have a, a choice. business hours option. Yeah. You know that like it's only been the new um, clients that we kind of I think being a bit more flexible with because we're like, well, we are at home during the day, so yeah, you know, we can do things, and the kids will be back at school soon. But yeah, that was never an option, and Ben would just say straight up, "No, I work during the day." It can yeah. be at, yeah. it can be from six o'clock. Yeah. Any time, but and I can't now, get there till six. And now it's just it's on Skype. Yeah. Because then I don't have to drive anywhere, you don't have to drive anywhere. We can be efficient with our time and everyone's like, Oh, that's a yeah, really good idea. <laughs> it's such a good so, idea because I could yeah. totally relate when you were talking about you gotta drive there, you gotta go like buy the coffee, have the coffee. and it takes so long to get started sometimes. People just yeah. I don't Yeah, and you're get, and you're getting paid for an hour. Well I always make yeah. them come me like so yeah. if they're like you know half an hour to drive i'll drive 10 minutes they've got to drive 20. it's just like yeah. they're investing more you know to get yeah. there yeah. Um, yeah. but it's still it's still um you know that yeah we've also found megs we've also found that the skype thing has been really cool as a training tool because mm. um you could have a conversation with someone about power editor and you're talking and talking whether if you're at a cafe or an office or something um when you're on skype or zoom or whatever um, you can really quickly go, you know what, let me show you. And we share screen and we open up Power Editor and we snap into it or we say to them, open it up and I'll show yes. you exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, or even show, they, they might have an issue and we're like, we'll share your screen, show us what you're doing. Yeah. And um, they can actually show us. And it only so. takes them one or, two, uh, one or two of those little moments and they're, yeah. they love it. You know, they do. Yeah. And I think we, we kind of felt, um, you know, like if ever you meet, with Greg and Fiona as well. It's all very, you know, time is money. Yeah. And that's, that's what we want them to understand, but for their own business yeah. as well as. It ticks on 30 minutes. They're like, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> Got to go. You know, we, <laughs> we're not that strict with our clients. We do often run out to an hour and a half. Yeah. But, you know, we, we want them to know that that is what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Awesome. At least, and then, you know, they know that you're giving them more than what they're paying for. Hmm. On, top yeah. of, on top of the advice, I mean, you give them extra time. Yeah. Well, we do, and that's just our way of constantly adding value. You know, if they go, we're 10 minutes over, we go, it's not a problem. You yeah. know? You yeah, know? Let's finish this conversation, then we wrap it up. Yeah. I mean, it does get to a point, obviously, where you do say, say all right, I'm going to have to wrap this up now. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we know that it's all about value. Just got to keep yeah. adding and adding and adding. And if, if those, those guys can turn around at the end of the month and say, you know what, for this much money, they're supposed to give us five hours and they give us eight or nine and True. we're learning, you know, they're going to be customers forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. We come all night and better let someone else ask something. <laughs> <laughs> we should Skype though. Yeah, we should. Yeah. yeah. I will, um, for everyone else, I do just want to give actually just one other, um, if this is a bit unrelated, but I just thought of then example of when, it, you know, coming down to money and things as well. We just before Christmas, we had a client who was running a campaign and they emailed Ben. Was it just before Christmas or just after who Christmas? Who are you talking about? The um, online course, how she oh, emailed yeah. you and she said, I've stopped everything. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Because that was. 
She classic was, like, yeah, response was there that you said. Classic, that. classic business response from someone who just thought they'd spent too much money. So we've been running a, we're launching a course on the 4th of January. It's been two weeks down. Um, we started, started the campaign on the 1st of December and we had a $2,000 budget to, um, to run through December. And then whatever sales we made, we were going to re reinvest a percentage of those sales to continue our, our marketing budget. So we had two grand no matter what. That was our, mm. our initial investment. Anyway, so cut to the 23rd or 24th of December and I sent them a report that said, we've done $32,000 worth of sales and it's mm. cost you guys $1,792. And what had happened um, before they'd read that email is they had a, a Facebook bill for $900, which was for the last two weeks, and they'd paid that bill. And Tracy, our client, had emailed us and said, guys, we're really happy with the sales, but we're cutting it all off now. We've spent enough. Yeah. And I jumped on Facebook. Yeah, yeah I went, oh, my we God. Did. We did. We did. Oh, I was in the kitchen, I think. Bill was like, oh, my God, you've got to come and look. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I, I emailed back really quickly. I thought, I'm not going to get on the phone because I'm maybe too aggressive. But... <laughs> Uh, on email, I went, um, Tracy, thanks for your email. In actual fact, Facebook isn't costing you money. It is making you money. L let me show you these numbers and showed the numbers. I said, in actual fact, in the last week, you've spent $650 and you've made $5,500. My advice to you is spend $5,000 really quickly <laughs> like that. And we did. We did another $12,000 sales. They, between, they immediately came back and, went, yeah, and went, we trust you. Do whatever you think. It, they, all, they almost <laughs> went, we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it just goes to show you how having that outside point of view, yeah. you know, when you're in the business, yeah, they got this bill and they just went, oh, my God, $900. $900 dollars to Facebook. Insane. Oh, my goodness. But reality, when you break down those numbers and work it back for them, this is your hundreds and hundreds of percentage profit yeah. <laughs> on your spend. Like It was like a 14, 1,400% or 1,500% return on investment. Insane. It was crazy. It was insane. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I just thought that was a pretty, pretty crucial. That, that, that just wasn't a fluky campaign, by the way. There'd been a month oh, lead a of, up and a lot, lot of, of nurturing, and it wasn't just like lucky. It was there was a massive plan before we started. Like we we were leading up to this campaign with like strategic posts and knowledge yeah, and all sorts content, leading into this course. So yeah. we played the fans really well and the and the email list really well. Yeah. And the feedback from the course. I got read a few testimonies today is off the chart. Yeah. So yeah. really good. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Silence. Does anybody else think consulting could be something they would consider? Is anybody You're thinking about not it? doing it and maybe thinking it could be a... Yeah, it's Annie here. Yeah, absolutely. Hi. Thinking about it. Hello. I'm in the Hi. Riverland. How do you, uh, in the Riverland, South Australia, and have a lot of um, small businesses here, and a lot of, and I guess I'm in networks with a lot of um, gold traders as well. Yeah. So yeah, definitely thinking around that, and just probably a lot of what you said resonated well, which was about not perhaps feeling confident to start with like you know do I really know enough to share to other people but then I'm a bit of a wing and a prayer so I have type of person so I need to remember that from when I was working for someone else to putting that sort of headset into the space working for myself basically yeah yeah definitely look I am um, in particular there was one occasion after we'd probably been doing because we do all of our consults together um and it had probably been about four weeks maybe and then Ben was somewhere and he wasn't able to make the Skype consult with these people and mm. I was just like, I, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not, can't do this. And he was like, yeah, you're going to have to. These people are waiting. Get on that call. And I was like panicked. I was so stressed the whole call and I, but I'd beforehand I'd like, and this, this was literally five minutes before it was meant to start. So I wasn't even a lot of time to prepare and I jotted down all these notes and I was like, Oh shit. And I just literally got on and just ran with it. And the whole time, like, it, you know, at different times I'd be like, Oh, you know what? That's probably something that I'll double check that with Ben. But I tried to lead the conversation a bit more as well, you know, and focus on the things that I felt I was um, quite, confident about or the areas where I'm stronger like Ben does a lot more of the IT technical side of things you know the design web design the um putting up the actual ad that type of thing whereas my background is more strategy and my brain works more with strategy so 
I kind of tried to direct them through the whole hour to be more about strategy and more about mindset and, you know, looking at those money-making activities or ways that they could potentially expand um, the business or, you know, whatever the campaign was they were considering, looking beyond just, well, we've just got to put ads up, you know. Yep. So I know that that's where I work best, so I kind of try to direct it in that way and I found just getting that first call out of the way, after that I was, I was fine. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it's always yeah, that first one. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think and the first one is it's great to, and it was good that you got stuck in that position and Ben wasn't there. So that's actually ideal. Um, yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, for me, it'll either be call the dog over or the dogs, or do it myself. So I probably have to do it myself. Yeah. Well, this is it. <laughs> this is it. And I think as well from that um, first call as well, you do realise how much knowledge you actually do have because. Yeah. You know, just even just like I say, that outside perspective on someone's business, mm, mm. they go, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Well, yes, I need to put that in place. We've actually had moments where we've got off of a call in the very first few we were doing, and we were very, not sceptical, but just unsure of ourselves, weren't, <laughs> weren't super confident. And we would get off of a call and look at each other and go, oh, my God, you're awesome. You're awesome. And, <laughs> and, and, awesome. and we're just like, we do know our stuff. Because <laughs> we you know, it's still them just like going, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And we're just going, boom, 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 boom. And you get off the call and you're just like, <laughs> oh. It, it's, yeah, we've had a few of those yeah. moments as well where we've just gone, we, 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 we listened, we learned. Yeah. I yeah. will admit we've also had a couple of calls back at the start where we'd come off and then it'd be like, you kept cutting me off. You kept <laughs> talking over me. <laughs> so yeah, we did have to work out those yeah. things too. <laughs> That's a, yeah. that's a woman's job, really. <laughs> well, this is it. We've now this got we've, we've now got little notes down here, so if yeah, we want right. to say something to each other, we <laughs> and I'd do a little like yeah down below you the screen so no one can see. Just kick him under the desk. Just kick no, him. She does. <laughs> she does. Yeah. That's good. that's good. Anyway, thank you. Great to listen to, and it's really nice when you just listen to people um, who are like most of us. Just mm. you know, just just people, and and yeah. I think sometimes we forget that. Um, most of the people doing this are just people, you yeah. know. They're not. They're not experts. They didn't didn't start off as experts anyway. They, you know, a lot would be experts now, but but it's just about um, making the move, starting really. Yes. Yeah, and and I was just going to say, any um, two things. Just obviously, be select with the people that you choose to approach in the mm. first instance. So make sure that you mm. can like that. They're not already. Um, you know, research what they're doing as well, but yeah. also trust in the fact that no one's reading the type of material. Well, the majority of people are not exposed to the type of materials that we have to read in the SFM yeah. back office yeah. or DEA, yeah. if that's where you're at. Um, yeah. All that information there is a cut above, you know, the everyday person. So yeah. again, I, I just say, make sure whichever business or person you choose to approach, just do a little back, back, bit of background research on them. Find yep. out where they're at, look at their Facebook page, their websites, um, see where they are on Google, see, see where they are in general. And that'll mm. give you an idea as to what you can offer and what type of a conversation you can have with them. And then maybe even just jump in the back office and refresh your mind on yep. some of the things that you want to talk about as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yep, I agree. Anyway, thanks, guys. That's me done. Bye. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. 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 Nice Bye. meeting you. Bye. See ya. Bye. Guys, I just want to thank um, Ben and Blanche for their mm -hmm. help the other day, especially Blanche. Um, hope okay. everyone can hear me. Yeah. Uh, after our um, talk the other day, I sat down today and had a really good think about what we, what we talked about. And yep. I met up with some ladies here who are friends uh, who are a lot more old school, old teachers from from their retired and in that sector. So we sat and we had a coffee and I basically told them what I've been doing because they're totally different age group, age level, but still educational. So in that in that um, coffee, we basically, I explained to them what I was doing and I've seen a few face facial expressions of interest. So. I handed them a bit of a notification that I'd drawn up of what I could provide for. And one of the ladies who's actually a cleaner at the local school and the local daycare it suggested to me that um, she's going to contact the local daycare here in town um, 
they don't have a website, they don't have Facebook, they don't have any social media sectors at all. So she's going to speak to them and see if they and, and hand them a flyer and pass it on. So um, I just want to thank you guys for giving that that little bit of clarity and that nudge um, to just sort of bring it all together. It was I pretty well at it all scattered out. So thank you so much for your help. Oh, that's okay. We're pleased we were able to help. No worries at all. That's the thing. People, a lot of people don't, just don't realise the potential of digital marketing and it only takes a, you know, small introduction and they, you know, you, it, it only takes that little introduction and you realise what knowledge you've got as well. Mm. So, and I, and you know, it is, most people under underestimate what knowledge they've got until they actually start getting out there and, you know, get that little bit of clarity about who they they you know want to go to and um, that was a little bit hard because you've either got teachers or farmers or students so being such an isolated community of probably six or seven hundred people it's like which direction do you go and as i said to you blanche there's mm. you've got the farmers and being a hobby farmer i'm sort of going out of that area but i'm going more into the digital side of things yep. so it was i was really struggling with that but yeah. After our chat, it's sort of, I thought, well, bugger this. I'm going to get these ladies together. I'll pitch my story, see what happens. And yeah, yeah their facial expression was, was enough. Um, and I actually had one client there who attended as well, who I got up on Facebook. And she's now going to go into other sectors. She wants to go on my mailing list. So that okay. the affiliate side, she's going to get all the affiliate side of it as well. So. Yeah, thanks. Oh, that's Good. fantastic. That's that's excellent. And that's one thing as well we really want people to realise is that it doesn't really matter necessarily, you know, where you are or if, you know, if you're in a major city or you're not in a major city um, in that you can, this is online. We are doing digital marketing. We are, you know, it is all online and it's totally acceptable for you to not meet face-to-face -face with people. Um, and if even if the only reason that you give is the fact that, well, this is a digital business. Yeah, I can Skype with you from anywhere in the world. You know, that just goes to support what we're all doing anyway with SFM as well, to say, well, this is actually true. We don't have to meet with you. Mm. So, yeah. We're really glad that things yeah. are, um, energy is different around you, Terry. That's awesome. Yeah, really good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Nice work. It's amazing. Yeah. Just the around. Good. That's why we love. That's why we love love SFM, SFM, don't we? Yeah, that's it. Love it. And I've also sorted out that SFM little matter too. So I'll, good. Yeah. Good. Sorted as well, and that took a lot of pressure off as well. So once that was resolved, everything else is a little like, yeah. Well, I can do this. Um, I've got a situation that I need to resolve now. So yep. I started sort of thinking, well, I can't go big scale and, and pack up and move straight away to a big city where there's a lot of people I need to focus on the ones right here and right now because yeah. they're, they're potential clients as well so yeah even even though they are little old school and old fashioned and don't want to know about computers it's, yeah but yeah I can, it can be a little persuasive sometimes oh good <laughs> that's excellent you've got to use you've got to use everything you've got yeah that's it hmm Nice work. And everybody's Terry. got a story. Everybody's got a, you know, something that we we say to one of our clients in particular. She's um she does very well. She's very successful, and she's the one with the fifty thousand odd Facebook 65. fans. Sixty five. Oh, six, sorry, she's about to hit seventy five thousand. Yeah. Facebook fans, and you know, we we kind of say to her, like all the time, you've got to, you know, it's about you. People want you. And she'll be like, no, no, I don't it's know. Like, why would people oh, want to spend time with you? Who me? would care about me? And we're like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. you need to get that rock star mentality that, you know, the vast majority of people are just doing the same thing that they've always done. They get up, they go to work, they come home from work, they cook their kids' dinner. And they, they sit on the couch. And they sit on the couch and watch TV and then they see someone doing something different and it doesn't mean that they're going to do the exact same thing, but they're inspired by that. You know, they want to meet you. They want to know what you're doing. They want to hear your story. Um, you know, because 
in most unfortunate circumstances, they're not willing to do it themselves. And that's totally okay for them. You know, they, that's fine. Not everybody wants to, to do something different, but they do want to hear about what you're doing. Yeah, the ones that accept the story and they've experienced what I can do, they've actually taken the flyers and they're like, want to recommend me to other people now. So it's like, yeah. um, this is, yeah, I, I know it's going to happen and it's going to hit yeah. big, but it's just going to be jolly steps in the, in the making. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Okay, Lovely. I'm going to mute out now. I've had my face. Okay. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> Anyone else got any questions? Make the most of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone's quiet. If anybody does have questions beyond this call, just reach out. I think yeah. just find us online or... <laughs> you can find um, us in the group. Find yeah, us exactly in the group. Right. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> You think of a question later on? Yeah. No worries. If no one's got any more questions, um, we'll call it a night. Um, and okay. this has been recorded. And I'll get it up over the weekend sometime. Nice Perfect. one. Thanks, Thanks again, on. Robbie. It's been wonderful having you. Thanks so uh, much, Robbie. Thanks, Robbie. Awesome. Thanks, Blanche and Ben. Great call, guys. Thanks very much. Thank no you.